Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Mandalay Bay Convention Center. Thank you for joining us. Last Thursday evening, the Boston Red Sox announced the signing of right-handed pitcher Nathan Avaldi to a four-year contract through the 2022 season. In a moment, you'll have the opportunity to ask questions of Nathan Avaldi, President of Baseball Operations Dave Dombrowski, and Red Sox manager Alex Cora. But first, I'd like to turn it over to Dave Dombrowski to say a few words. Thank you, Abby. Thanks for everybody for being here. Uh, we're very thrilled to have uh, Nate back with the organization. He did a tremendous job for us last season, joined us during the regular season and the stalwart uh, postseason. Uh, for us, it was really a focus if we could bring Nate back, and fortunately, it worked out. I'd like to thank uh, our ownership group, with John Henry and Tom Werner, Mike Gordon, for their support to make this happen, as always, uh, the dedication to, to win and put the best club on the field that we can. Uh, to really the person who did the majority of this work for our organization, which is Brian O'Halloran. He did uh, all this work, and, and a special thanks to the Levinson brothers, the Sam and Seth, who he stayed in contact with, and the rest of their group, that they made this happen. And most of all, uh, for Nate for accepting our offer. So uh, we're very happy to have you back, and uh, thrilled to go, look forward to having him part of our organization heading into the next spring training. We can now start with questions. If you have a question, please raise your hand and wait for the microphone and state your name and affiliation. Jason, uh, Jason Mastronato with the Boston Herald. Dave, how important was it to you to kind of keep this group together now that you have Steve and Nate from the team that won it all? Well, you're trying to um, keep as many members of the club together as you possibly can. However, um, we, we won 108 games, had a good ball club during the regular season, and played very well in the postseason. However, we've said uh, numerous times that it's very difficult to do in today's game and with the rules and free agency. So uh, I think Nate bringing them back was very important for us. So making that happen, but again, it's, I don't know that it's going to be possible to do with everybody on a regular basis. Ian Brown, uh, MLB.com. Nate, just out of after everything you've been through in your career, uh, injuries, you know, how much, uh, how good does this feel just to, to get a contract like this? Just after some of the things you've been through. Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, it's definitely amazing. You know, everything that I've worked for and you know had to come back from. It's uh, nice to know that the hard work paid off, and for it to be with the Red Sox, it couldn't be a better organization. Tom Karen from Nesson. Uh, Nathan, uh, last week the DVD was, uh, was, was premiered and the fans were kind of all going crazy whenever you showed up and people yelling, sign Nathan, bring him back. Did, did you hear about that and what does it mean when you hear that about the fan base? Yeah, AC called me right after the, right after the showing and Brock got on the mic or, or on the phone and was talking to me about it. And uh, I mean, just to hear that reaction from the fans, I mean, everything that I was able to do in the postseason and then when I was traded over, um, you know, Super excited to be able to come back and, you know, join the Red Sox and, uh, you know, be here for another four years. Uh, yeah, um, you know, this, the free agency, it's something I, you know, I haven't ever experienced before. So, you know, I was trying to put my family first and, uh, you know, trying to see what other options were out there for me. And, um, you know, the Red Sox, they came in hot with their offer, and we were extremely happy. And, uh, you know, my wife, my family, everybody, you know, they, joined the, they, they all enjoyed that experience so much. And, you know, everything that the Red Sox were able to do for me, and not only me, but they took care of my family really well. You know, there were a couple incidences last year, and they stepped up big for us. And, uh, you know, we're just real excited to be able to come back and be a part of that. And, you know, again, that rotation that we have, it's unbelievable, the pitching staff. And, um, you know, the, re the relationship that I made with all those guys for just that short period of time, you know, I'm definitely looking forward to coming back and playing with them. Hi, uh, Nathan, Dan Roach from WBZ. Just how, um, how important was that relationship to you? And also, how many other teams were interested in you? And there's perhaps stories out there that you may, might have turned down uh, even more money from other, other teams. Yeah, um, I mean, there were other teams out there that were interested for sure, but, you know, again, you know, out of respect to those teams, I don't want to name anybody in particular, but um, there were other offers. But again, you know, the Red Sox, they came in with the best one. And, um, you know, 
the relationship that I had over there and all that all that experience that I had gained and you know I feel like as a player you always want to have that the uh, love and support from your teammates and not only them but from the fans and you know I felt like I was able to uh, to achieve that you know last year with the postseason run and you know I want to come back and experience that again and hopefully be able to be a part of history again and come back and win another World Series. Uh, Nathan Sean McAdam, Boston Sports Journal. Just wondering the outpouring of emotion that you got after game three from your teammates, before the parade, lots of guys saying that you needed to come back and how important it was to have you back. How big a factor was that emotion and welcoming from teammates, fans, the region uh, in your decision making? Yeah, I mean, I feel like that was a big part of it. You know, again, like I said, uh, you always want to have that love and support from your fans and your teammates and, you know, the love and support that they were showing me throughout that whole the whole series and especially after that game three. I mean, it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it. And it's, uh, you know, it's definitely a special moment and dear to my heart. Um, and I want to be, come back and be a part of that again. Nick in the back. Okay. Nathan, uh, Nick Cafardo with the Boston Globe. Uh, was it very important to you to stay being a starter? I know there's, there were some reports about teams wanting you as a closer. Was, was being a starter uh, the most important thing to you? Yeah, I mean, I view myself as a starter, and, you know, that's something that I've always done my entire career, and, you know, I enjoy doing that. So, I, you know, if I had that choice, I, would, I still wanted to be a starter. So, I mean, yeah. Hi, hey Nathan Rombaum from AP. Did some of the teams that contacted you tell you that they were interested in you out of the bullpen? Mm -hmm. And for Dave and Alex, how, did your evaluation of Nathan change at all with the Game 3 performance? Yeah, I had a couple of, you know, there were a lot of teams that reached out. I had a few that wanted me to be a closer, and then other guys who wanted me to come out of the bullpen, and then others wanted to try and do part-time part to, uh, you know, save my arm. So... I mean, we go back to that game, obviously, and, and what he did was amazing. Uh, I keep saying, for, for me personally, you know, that was like the biggest moment of the World Series, uh, for him to compete at that level. Uh, the conversations in between innings, they were, they were cool, and I still remember the last one, you know, when I asked him, hey, uh, how you feel? And he's like, let me finish it. You know, and he, he said that with a lot of conviction. And um, I knew he was good, you know, when, when he came in. He bought into the concept throughout uh, the regular season. We made some adjustments as far as like usage and, and the way he was attacking hitters. And um, you know, I can't wait to see him again with us. You know, uh, he's going to be a huge part of this rotation. And you know, he's a workaholic. He, he, he goes to the weight room, he prepares, training room, same deal. He studies and uh, um, you know, four years of Nathan, uh, that's going to be great for the organization. for Dave and Alex. Um, we use the expression gamer a lot, and calling a guy a ball player is maybe the greatest compliment you can make. I know you hope you have a room full of those guys. But what's the difference when you actually see it playing out that you know you have a couple of guys that, that do stuff like that? Well, sometimes it's a difference between winning and losing. I mean, when you have guys that will go that extra mile for you, uh, you never want to put them in harm's way. There's a constantly checking with Alex and our medical staff. But when the players put forward that that extra step, that gamer, um, that can make the difference. Because a lot of talent's in the game. We have a lot of talent in our organization. But I think one of the differences in winning ultimately ended up being the type of makeup individuals that we had on the team. Um, I mean, one one thing for sure, and last month and a half the topic has been about their usage in, in October but they were prepared uh, I mean we took care of them in the regular season and they knew going into October that the usage was going to be a little bit different um, the difference is that they they were willing to do it too I mean he, he walked in into into that breakfast room the next day after game three and he said he was ready for it that night it's not that I was going to use him of course you know I'm I'm not that stupid but uh you know, the willingness for uh, all of them, you know, to, to, to go out there and perform and knowing that they were going to be healthy and, 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 
and do it at the highest level. If that's being a gamer, well, we got a bunch of them. Dave, with some of the questions that exist about your rotation going forward, contract status after 2019, you know, uh, being an uncertainty for guys like Sale and Porcello, how significant was it to, to add Nate and to have him kind of part of the vision of the rotation going beyond next season? Well, I think it's part of the equation, very important. Uh, we know that there's a lot of question marks about long-term contractual status of part of the members of our club. It's going to be a juggling act over the next few years. Again, we know we're not going to be able to sign everybody, but the more stability that's out there, the better off we are. And right now we're in a spot where and we hope to keep everybody. It won't happen due to the rules, due to some of their interests, some of the contract offers they receive in other places. But having um, the possibility of having Nate and being in a position where you have a couple other guys, and you know with David Price and with Eduardo, you've got at least three members as you go forward, and we hope that we have five of them. Hey, uh, Dave, Barry Bloom from Forbes. Uh, just a question in that vein, how much space do you still have to try and re-sign Kimbrell? Or if you don't, what's the, what's the backup plan? Well, we'll see about the financial aspect of it. Um, you know, our payroll is significant at this point, so we'll see what takes place. But um, if we don't make any outside acquisitions, we do feel we have some internal choices with guys like Ryan Brazier, Matt Barnes, a couple of guys that we think can step forward. I'm um, not necessarily it'll be a closer, but with this type of with signing Nate back, now we can move Stephen Wright into our bullpen too. So we do have some options out there. Alex, Chad Jennings from The Athletic. Alex, last year you came into spring training with thoughts about how to keep a rotation healthy and, and rested. I wonder, through the course of the season, did you learn anything more about how tricky that process is? I mean, Nathan talked about some teams approaching him about bullpen just for health concerns, about w ways to keep him rested and keep him viable for the year. Yeah, I mean, we, we have a pretty good idea what we're going to do in the regular season, how we're going to use him. Uh, one of the conversations in the last one, uh, last week, uh, kind of like mapped out. Um, I think teammates approached Nate about how we do things in spring training, how we're going to take care of them, and uh, uh, we're going to be we're going to be in good shape. And, and that's where you know roster uh, flexibility and versatility comes into play. Um, I mean, for how great they were, Hector and BJ, they they were the saviors of the season because we were able to use them in different situations, different spots, and, and they actually save the rotation. So nothing is going to change. Uh, spring training is going to be um, probably shorter for them as far as like usage, but they're going to be prepared for Seattle. So looking forward to that. Uh, Stephanie Epstein from Sports Illustrated. For Dave and Nathan both, given how slowly the free agent market has moved over the last couple of years, how much on both sides was time a factor? How, much, how important was it to both of you to get this done early? Well, I'll start from mine. Uh, you prefer always to do something quicker if you can, but you also realize that that's not always possible. And so sometimes patience has to pay off. But if, you, if it was our preference, you'd prefer to move it along because if you're in a spot that if it's not going to work, sometimes you have to look at your other choices. So. Quicker the better, but not always the case. Got yours. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> sometimes the deal's there and sometimes it's not. You know, if, for me, it was there. and I mean, it was a no-brainer for me to come back here. So uh, on my part, I felt like it was an easy, easy decision to come over here. And you know, I felt like my agency did a great job and uh, knowing when, when it was the right time. Evan, right over here. Evan Drellick, NBC Sports, Boston. For uh, Nate and Dave, Nate first, um, you've, you're pretty unique after two surgeries. You know, why do you think you've been able to be as effective and stay as healthy as you've been? And, and for Dave, what gives you the, the confidence that he'll be able to stay healthy over the course of four years? I mean, I feel like I've learned a lot from my surgeries. Um, you know, I work extremely hard trying to come back from it, and I put all my trust and faith, you know, in God's hands and also the fact, you know, that we have such an elite training staff, you know, they know what they're doing and, you know, I trust them and I think one of the biggest things I've learned over the time is just telling them if I feel something. You know, in the past, if I feel a little soreness, like, I'll just keep trying to throw through it and then it kind of develops into something else, but, you know, I feel like I can trust our training staff and that had a big, uh, big role in me coming back over here as well and, you know, anytime now that I feel anything, I tell them and, you know, we start the, you know, the rehab or the treatment for it 
and then if it gets worse, then you know we take that route. But um, you know, I feel like we've been able to work through a lot of different things and stay healthy. Well, taking that as a first part of it, our medical staff and Nathan's work ethic and communication factors and his hard work and how strong he is. But in addition to that, our medical staff, I mean, our doctors, we reviewed all the medical records, had additional tests done, uh, some of it uh, right after the season. And so with the way our medical personnel felt, our doctors, that um, looking at all the past surgical history felt very comfortable to go to this length of contract. Now we always realize there's a risk with any pitcher that you take, any player, but they checked very thoroughly and felt comfortable with the length. Nate, obviously you have a senior type staff, but when you get to spring training, you know that there are younger guys always looking. Don Mattingly said something earlier today. He said he, he would have bet on you years ago because of the way you went out and approached the, the work part of this. How aware are you now that guys down in camps, backfields, maybe have an understanding and they are watching you out of the corner of their eye to try to figure out how do I get my work done? Yeah, and I feel like that's part of it. I mean, you, you can't take for granted, that, you know, every day that you get to put on that big league jersey and you're representing, you know, the Red Sox on your chest. And um, you always want to go out there and do a good job and work hard. You know, they don't want to see you walking around and, you know, kind of nonchalanting it out there. And uh, you never know who's watching it. It could be the minor league guys or it could be, a, you know, a kid in the stands who's coming out there to watch spring training. And, you know, you want to set a good example, not only for them, but, you know, for the community as well. Uh, Billy Witz with the New York Times. Nate, did, I was just wondering if you can go back to like 2016 and you had, you know, when you got hurt, it was just a couple months before you were going to hit free agency. When that happened, did you think that a contract like this was, you know, even going to be possible for you? Yeah, I mean, at that time, I, it was my free agent year and, you know, all I had to do was finish the season strong and, you know, it, you know, I ended up getting hurt and it was actually against the Red Sox and, uh, you know, just, I didn't think that it wouldn't be possible. I knew it was just going to be a little bit longer, you know, delayed in the process. But, uh, you know, again, you know, I feel like I trust in, you know, in God. And I feel like everything he does for us, you know, he has a plan for us. And I just have to, you know, be patient and keep working hard. And, you know, I feel like it'll come and I feel like it has. Are there any further questions? That concludes today's press conference. Thank you, everyone. Good job. Way to go. Appreciate it. Thank you.